Hi there, Saturn class. This afternoon we're going to do some RE and after um, the clip you're going to be able to create some very careful artwork all about a particular story in the New Testament. Before we go on, what we're going to do is just look at this phrase here that we've heard before. We want to think about where we've heard it before. Where have you heard this phrase before? Don't judge a book by its cover. So we say it quite often when we think about books, when we take a book off a bookshelf and we look at the cover and think, Ooh, it's not a very exciting cover. And we open the book, we start reading and we think, wow, actually, this is an amazing story with great language, with a great plot, fantastic characters, funny storylines, jokes, maybe poems. And so it's very tempting to look at a book and think, oh, no, I don't fancy that. But once you get into it, you can see inside that actually it's more than just what's on its cover. Quite often we use this um, phrase for other um, things, like for example, people. Sometimes we might say don't judge a book by its cover when we talk about a person, because they may not dress the same as you, they may not look like you, they may have a bit of a grumpy face, but you never know, they might be the most cheery person on the inside. They might be kind, let's hope they are kind. Let's hope they are um, friendly, even if they don't look like they are a particularly friendly person. So it's important not to judge a book by its cover, even though sometimes when we do actually pick up a book that has a, a great cover, we can actually really enjoy the book too. But just I want you to think about that, trying, trying not to judge a book by its cover, not just about books, but about people or things. OK, so we'll carry on with the rest of our, our, our RE lesson because today we're going to look at giving up things. Because when we look at um, our story from the uh, New Testament, where Jesus will choose his first disciples, his first followers, he asked them to give up a great many things. And what I want you to do now is sketch very quickly your three most favourite possessions. You can do that into your book and you can pause the video to do so. Okay, now underneath that, what I'd like you to do is write three things you might do in a week. So they might be music lessons, dance lessons, martial arts, swimming or football. I know that we can't do those things at the moment, but imagine it's normal times, no lockdowns. What would you normally be doing in a week? Even if it's reading after school or watching TV. Think about those three things that you would be doing in a normal week. OK, just put that to one side for now because we will use it um, in, later on in the clip. I'm going to read to you the story of how Jesus cho chose his first disciples. Two brothers returned home. The two brothers were called Andrew and Peter and they were fishermen and needed to take care of their boats and nets. Peter noticed a huge crowd of people coming towards him. They were being led by Jesus. Jesus walked right up to Peter. He got into his boat and asked him to pull out a little way from the land. Then Jesus sat down in the boat. He began teaching all the people who lined on the shore. When Jesus had finished speaking, he turned to Peter. Go out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. But Peter said, Teacher, we worked hard all night and caught nothing. But all right, I will do as you say. Peter dropped his net overboard. He started to haul it in again and got the surprise of his life. It was full to bursting point. He called another boat to, help, to come and help him. By the time he and the other men had hauled all the fish on board, both boats were ready to sink. When Peter saw the great catch of fish, he cried, Oh yes, you are the Lord. But I am not a good man at all. Please leave me alone. Jesus told him and Andrew, you don't be afraid. Follow me and I will help you become fishers of men. Then Peter and Andrew put down their nets. They handed their boats, which were full of fish, and followed Jesus. As they walked along the shore, they soon met Peter's partners, two brothers named James and John. 
Jesus went up to them. Follow me, he said. They took one look at Jesus' face, felt their hearts turn over and agreed. These men became Jesus' closest friends. They followed him everywhere as he taught the people. They watched and learned from him. They were Jesus' helpers, his disciples. And there's a particular phrase in the story that I will share with you, and that is, do not be afraid, follow me, and I will help you become fishers of men. Now, here we can see the uh, fishermen, um, and we can see their nets full of fish. In the Google Classroom, I have put this set of slides as a separate um, um, resource if you need to, because here on this slide is a link to a YouTube clip, and there are for a YouTube clip, and there are many YouTube clips about um, Jesus calling his disciples that you might like to to watch. So, first of all, I want you to think about what Jesus asks Peter and Andrew to do. Okay, so he asks them to follow him. Before that. He asks them to go out and try to catch more fish, even though they had had a particularly hard night. He tells them, go, go and, go and get, go and see if you can catch more fish. And they trust him and they, they go, they go and catch more fish. And interestingly, they come back fully laden with plenty of fish. But by following Jesus, Peter and Andrew would have been giving up a great deal. They would have given up a lot. And I want you now to go back to your original list. I want you to think about those three things that you drew, your possessions, and those three things that you wrote about, those three things that you do, activities that you do each week. I want you to think, how would you feel if you were asked to give up those things? Would you be okay with it? If somebody said, you've got to give that up, you can't do it anymore. In fact, recently, we have been asked to give up those things. We can't go out and see our friends and we can't go out to swimming lessons. How does that make you feel? It's frustrating. It makes you feel quite sad. As a symbol, what we can do is imagine we're going to give up these things, even though we already have. We're going to rub out our drawings and screw up the pictures. We're going to give them to somebody else. If you've done them in your book, you can just put a neat line through them. Peter and Andrew thought that Jesus was a good man and that in him they would learn to follow his example. James and John were asked to be fishers of men. Nowadays, we might say fishers of people instead because it includes everybody, not just men. The idea that somebody is a fisher of people is a metaphor. So the idea that they are fishers of people, why do you think they are fishers of people? Well, if we think about the, the work of a fisherman, it's very hard work. And sometimes the fish don't want to be caught, they'll swim away. So Jesus knew that these people would be incredibly hardworking and that people would listen to them because they were normal fishermen people. They were people of the people. They belonged in the towns and people recognised them. And so he knew that people would, would, fo would follow their word and they in turn would be following Jesus's word and example. And the reason why we can call it a metaphor is because they're not literally fishing for people with a hook and a net, but they're catching them Again, they're not really catching them by, by physically catching them. It's not like a game of tag, but they're making them listen and they're gathering them in. What do you think a fisher of people might do? Would they be a teacher? Would they be a leader? Or as I've said, would they be quite normal? A fisher of people, what do you think they might do? Well, in the New Testament, we know that they spread the word of Jesus and the example of Jesus. And in our school, we indeed use following in Jesus's footsteps. We can also think about how the nets of a fisherman or nets of a fishing boat are cast wide and how hard the disciples would have to work, as I've said. 
and that they were ordinary men so people would listen to them and that they would need to catch people who might not want to be caught. So for today, having listened to the story and having had a think about how these people, these ordinary men, would, were asked to give up everything, I want you to spend some time creating a picture to illustrate the calling of the first disciples. I've got some examples here. You can pause the video and have a look. But as I say, you've got the clips, um, sorry, the Google Slides to help you. So you can see here that we've got some images of nets being cast wide, or some hardworking men out in the sea, a stained glass window showing the boat, the fish, the swirling waves, and Jesus there talking to James, Peter, John, and Andrew. Down here, we've got a very colourful one with bountiful fish in the sea. Maybe slight storm clouds breaking away for the sunshine. And to me, that sunshine would represent the light of the world, would, let, would represent Jesus, maybe. And we can see the fishermen catching their fish in their boat. Here is a photograph. What I do need you to do is include the Bible reference. Follow me and I will make you fishers of people. Can't wait to see your artwork. In the Google Classroom, there is some um, calming music that you can put on in the background to be able to do your drawing.